funny people. I told um, Karen that I'm going to tag her in this live. I have to tag her in this live. Yeah? Oh, don't mind the pencil. From the other day, I keep wrapping my head and I keep telling people that it's only the pencil that is missing. But <laughs> the weirdest thing. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Debbie. The weirdest thing happened <laughs> to us today. I don't know if you guys remember, for those of you who follow me over the other page, before I was restricted on it. Um, carry on, Curly, is that girl with the dreadlocks, yeah? One day last year, she called me up and she says, um, Shinafi, you know that the onion oil? You know, say it grow nails? But say, yeah, really? Really? Yeah? So anyhow, this is what happened to me. So I have this very good supporter, yeah? <laughs> She's having a little issue with her face. She gave me permission to tag her in the post. So I'm going to say it's Karen, yeah? So Karen is very light-skinned. You know what happens when you're light-skinned and you have sun damage? She's, she's what Jamaicans would say, call her red. Yeah. So <laughs> this is the best thing that ever happened. So I was supposed to um, create a set of skincare, a, a skincare routine for her. I don't know how it happened, but she was supposed to get the, um, <laughs> this is still funny. Oh, really, Debs? What was the question? So she was supposed to get the anti-aging serum, which is what I'm using now, because, you know, 41 approaching and the skin start to get dry out and yeah, prepare for menopause and all of those things that come after you eat 40. Yeah. So I don't know. I have just learned from Karen that she got the onion oil instead of the <laughs> instead of the um anti-aging serum, which in business it should normally be a very, very costly mistake. So this is what happened. So Karen now who has not Karen who has this Karen. Hey Miss Uganda. Karen, who has this um, issue, as I said, she's almost, she's very light skin. She's almost as light as my first son. She's very, very light skin, but she has these sun spots, these sun damages that has been, that she has had over the years. So Karen called me while I was on a live in the melanated skincare group. So I could not take her call. So I returned the call when I was finished with the live. And she called me and she was all excited. She was like, oh, I absolutely love the scrubs. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, fine. You like the feel of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm used to that. And then she says, but the oil is a miracle worker. Me now, not knowing or realizing that she got the wrong oil. I was like... Yeah, that's what I'm using. You don't see how my face change and it's getting more hydrated and I'm practicing to drink more water and stuff. And towards the end, she was at work. She's at work. So I'm there all excited saying, yeah, one more for the, uh, the anti-aging serum. One more for the anti-aging serum. And then she was like, um, can I use it twice a day? And I said, yeah, you can use it twice a day. Um, I told you to use it one, twice a day. Okay, thanks, Debbie. I told you to use it twice a day. And she goes, you remember the sun? You remember the sunspot I have right here? And I say, yeah, I remember. She said, don't you see it's gone? And all the impurities in my face is drying up. Now, my dear customer, Karen, has been using the onion oil on her face. <laughs> I know I am not supposed to laugh. And if it was... If it was not a natural product, I probably wouldn't be laughing. I'd probably be looking at a lawsuit up my ass. <laughs> but I just did a live to say that if you cannot consume your ingredients internally, you should not be putting it on your skin externally. And I wasn't finished with the live in five minutes when I learned that even though it was not the product she intended to use... <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, you're laughing with me, even though it was not the product she intended to use because I was a bit perplexed and puzzled as to how 
she is seeing results from the anti-aging. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> Thank you. I must tell you, you know, I know that it grows the nail because I was one of those people who have very thin nails. My nails cannot grow. They grow to a certain length and then it goes away. And then my customers in London conclude, um, confirmed for me that it has thickened her nails and grow her nails. That's why I tagged her in this post because she was also one of them using the onion oils for her nails. <laughs> Before she realizes she'll be using her hair. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I was like, Karen, I have to do, you are going to be the topic of my next live. Because usually when you make mistake, things that you put in your hair are usually a lot harsher than things that you put on your skin, on your face. Yeah. But whenever your products, and I, as I said, I, I just did a live in the private group where I was talking about hormone disruptors and the importance of ensuring that whatever ingredients you're using on your skin, you would also separate by itself because once it's formulated into a skincare product, you can't eat it. But you have to also ensure that it is edible, it is plant-based, yeah? So... Um, luckily, <laughs> she got rid of the thing. She got rid of the, the, the sunspots. You know, the thing that those um, people that are extremely light and are in tropical climates get. And I don't have a lawsuit coming at me. <laughs> so apparently, I knew this, but I don't market it for that. But apparently, those stubborn, so I'm now thinking it's probably fungus and something else in that thing. Those stubborn age spots, it's called does go away with the onion growth oil. And I'm thinking that it is the sulfur that is in the onion that does that. Because sulfur has a way to, um, the way sulfur works, I am thinking that is what stripped away. It didn't strip away, she just said it disappeared over the days. So she wanted it to go faster, so she was wondering if she could use it twice a day instead of once. And I was there telling her, yeah, you put it in, yeah, you just have to make sure you're putting it on your scalp and not on your hair. Because I think, I thought we were talking about the same two different products. <laughs> I think one, we're talking about the, and she said, the onion oil, but I don't take the thing off my face. <laughs> so thank you again, Karen, for being a good sport. I'm going to send you an anti-aging serum just because. <laughs> Apparently, you don't need that the onion oil did the trick for you. Hey, Natalie, the onion oil did the trick for you. But um, <laughs> for those of you who are just joining the live, you're going to need to, to, to watch it from the beginning so you understand what happened, the, the mistake that was made, and um, how... Um, and how the onion oil just like completely took away a whole portion of somebody's face. <laughs> yeah, I know I shouldn't be laughing under normal circumstances. But then again, I probably should just pat myself on being the conceited person I am and say one up for the seven natural steam. Yeah, so there is power in nature. There is power in the products. Um... Karen, thank you again for being a very, very good sport. Don't sue me. <laughs> I can't afford to pay you. <laughs> yeah. And um, tonight I will personally be doing something very, very special. I'll be having a pony steam. Mm -hmm. Oh, Deborah, um, I don't know. I am wearing a headpiece for those of you who are curious. The reason I've started wearing a headpiece, one, because somebody told me that when you're a singler in her culture, you wear a headpiece so that... <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. When you're a single in her culture, you wear a headpiece so that you're identified as a single woman. And since I do not want to die single, I'm wearing a headpiece, yeah? So I hope somebody else's culture is like that. The second reason I'm wearing a headpiece, as you guys know, I have had my fight and my bout with alopecia. 
and my hair is back it is perfect you guys saw that i posted but my hair is grown i'm not used to having hair at this stage i would normally cut my hair down but it is winter in sweden so i don't want to cut my hair down and it is at that uncomfortable stage where there's not very much i am able <laughs> i soon explain how to use the pony steam i might just demonstrate it in the private group for you natalie <laughs> But my things that will make people run. Anyhow. <laughs> the machine. We soon come to you. And let me explain about the hair wrap for me again. So my hair is in that uncomfortable stage where the only thing I could do with it is to unbraid it. I am trying to avoid alopecia whether it is alopecia areata that i had right here or traction alopecia that i often get from braiding my hair so that is why i am now going back to my african roots hi shereen viva dine dog that is why I've now gone back to my African roots and then I am, and then again it's Black Easter month, so I am covering my head. Now, about the great pom pom steam, yeah? You see, we, if you are a Christian, you probably don't because everybody knows that I can't pretty it up. The puny steam, the yoni steam, the vaginal steam, whatever you want to call it. I am a Jamaican and in my language, it probably should have named pum pum steam. Yeah. So, this is what happened. A lot of people think that, a lot of people do not understand the female anatomy. And we think that our vagina is this thing we can sip on the outside yeah it is not we have our periods all kind of sperms coming now no because i don't practice for use condom we wear all sort of tights and silk panty because we want to say we are wearing expensive underwears and we're not wearing the big old cotton bingo bags The vagina just goes through a rough thing. I don't know which one of our body, or what, which one of our parts suffer the most. Is it our foot bottom that we walk on a lot or is it our vagina? I don't know which one of our body part is abused the most. I don't. And because of this, and especially for those of us that are in colder climates at this time, we wear the leggings, we wear the tights and our vaginas are just not healthy. And some of them happen to smell. You might not smell it because you are normally the last person to smell yourself, but other people do. The other thing is, as I always tell people, I went through But um, the fact that your vagina is dormant means you're not having sex. I think that is what you mean, uh, my cousin. It does not escape the fact that you keep it in a... Oh, you're in, you're in Georgia, yeah? Georgia is cold this year. So it means that you're wearing... And you're a nurse, so you're wearing stockings. So first you have your underwear. And if you're stupid, you have a panty shield. And then you have the stocking. That is too much of humidity for the poor vagina. Yeah? Now, when we have our... For those of you who menstruate. Mm -hmm, for those of you, because for those of you who are born in the body you're currently in. Deborah, you're not, you're not, so you're not, catching, you're not catching them age day yet. Really? Although me did not menopause in my 20s. Yeah. But anyhow... You also have to remember that the only way you can clean, you can properly clean the vagina is through steaming. 
And what these herbs does, of course, you could probably sit in a pail of water and soak you out like you're in a bastu. Like I could go into my bathroom and go into my sauna. I think it's called sauna in English. And then I probably could open up my foot over the over age, um, over water. But the benefits of the herbs, like I used to see my grandmother do. For those of you who are old enough and from Jamaica, I know that white pail where my grandmother used to, and when my cousins used to have their menstruation, at the end of their menstruation, my grandmother used to put them on that pail and she would cook up those things. Claudia, why can't you go without um, pantichine? It is a it is a healthy vagina that releases discharge. So why can't you go without pantichine? I mean, depending on the color you're discharged, because if you're discharged, it's going to be like yellowish, then something is wrong. But if it is white to beige, if it is if it's about the color of what healthy sperms have, then nothing should be wrong with that. You should just be wearing um, cotton underwears. Yeah, but back to what I was saying. By steaming the vagina, just consider how it is when you steam your face. When you steam your face, you open up your pores and you release those toxins that are in your face, yeah? Then you should go without panties, Claudia. If the dyes in your panties are giving you infection, which probably is not the dyes in... It is probably not the dyes in your panties that are giving you infection. You probably need to buy the old-fashioned white cotton underwears that your grandmother used to wear. Because a lot of people think that it is the dyes in their panties that give them an infection. It is not the dyes in your panty. It is the humidity and the pressure you put on your vagina that gives you that infection. And the cleansers that you use. Because the truth to the matter is, the only thing you need to use to clean your vagina is coconut oil. Hot processed coconut oil. You would need to use nothing else. To, because for one, the vagina cleans itself. That is one. Two, your vagina is constantly in a cage. It is in a tube. If you wear panty sheen and if you wear silk underwear or whatever it is, that is not allowing ventilation your vagina is going to rebel. And one way of your vagina getting angry at you, short of it biting whatever enters it, it is going to turn up its nose. It's going to let you turn up your nose or whatever nose going there. So try wearing those cotton, old-fashioned cotton. I don't mean the modern made in China cotton. Those proper cotton underwears or no underwear at all. And when you're home, open up the goods and let nature come in. And steam, steam because between sperms and menstruation and every other thing. Who makes them, Jackie? Okay, she'll probably see that Debbie. Um, Deborah and Debbie, the Tono are cousin, the Tono are my cousin, both of you are on this live. So Deborah, you are Deborah, Deborah Caroline, and Miss Garden, you are Debbie for me. So you know who I'm referring to. So Curasa, you are Deborah, and Atlanta, you are Debbie. <laughs> All right, cool. When you have family members with the same name. Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> sorry. The other, how the steaming works, the, the, um, the, you know, um, if you put, if you are in your bathroom and you put fresh mint in your bath, if you use hot water, warm enough water, the smell from the mint will release and calm your moods or from the lavender or from eucalyptus or those calming plants. The same thing applies when you use the, veg, the, um, the puny steam. Yeah, when you sit, most of us will not have the chair to sit on. So this is what you do. 
You cook your water. When you buy a vagina steam, a punu steam from us, it has four doses in it. Yeah? So it's equal. Just divide it in four. You cook the water. And most of you must have seen your grandmother did this as a child, but you just never pay attention. You cook the water. Most of us are not going to have the, the, um, the purpose-built stool. So use your toilet. Put a, get something for that purpose, like a little wash basin or whatever it is. Open the first layer of your toilet and put it down in it. Cover it, sit on it. Use a blanket or something, as warm as you can take it. Use a blanket or something to cover you so the steam doesn't escape. The same principle when you're steaming your face to release the toxins from under your skin. When the plants, when the botanicals interacts with the warm water, the active ingredients in them are released and they go up into your tube, 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 tube. And just as if you would, have, you would have drank mint tea or whatever ingredient it is that is in it, the effect is the same in, within your internal female parts because um what happened for those of you who do not practice sex with a condom one thing happened to all of that sperms when i met, when I met man coming down why is it that you think that some people after the, some days after their menstruation them start to smell Fish, not fishy, them start to smell like a stinking blood. What do you think? What, what, what do you think caused that? Because it is impossible once the egg is released, it is impossible for everything to come out naturally. Steaming gives you the whole process of expansion and contraction. Now, somebody was asking if it would make your vagina tight. Nothing makes your vagina tight. All vaginas are the same size, if you ask me. Although the other day I saw a lady on a video say she not promised no man. So she said she not promised no man tight vagina. If you come, if you put on a, what you call it? The jacket. <laughs> but anyhow, nothing makes your vagina tight except your muscle tone. I think they say all vaginas are 2.5 centimeters. And then based on your muscle tone, or if you're in love with the person or not, because if you're not in love with a person, your vagina is going to be very, very tight because it is going to be very, very dry because you're not going to self-lubricate. Yeah? <laughs> so if you have no, so you're, if you have no, if a man, <clears throat> And it's really the lubrication that makes it poco poco or whatever you people call it. You know me. I am raw. No wonder Facebook banned me. I Auntie Donna. Auntie Donna with the tea. Yeah. So that is what steaming does. And if you people realize back in the days, for those of you who are my age and older, you would remember that when your mothers or when your grandmothers or when your neighbors used to give birth, back in the days when the village used to raise the child and everybody was up into your birthing business, You'd remember that on after three months of isolation, don't ask me why Jamaican women used to isolate themselves for three months after they give birth, but African women still do it, some of them that are down in their tradition. After your grandmother gives birth, and if they were like my grandmother that is having a baby every other year for 12 years, and she never even get fat. After the three months mandatory isolation, they will start to boil up them basil and them whisk and them St. John's wort and their, all these herbs. And they used to put it on their pail. And you remember this peacock spread that the holiday, the Christmas spread that every Jamaican household had. Yes, uh, Miss Donna, we are talking about the power. <laughs> We're talking about the vagina. And how the vagina, I, I am unsure if it is the vagina or your feet, the foot bottom, that takes the most beating. 
that has to withstand so much. And we're talking about infection versus um, just not having, not practicing the right, um, the right um, vaginal hygiene. Yeah. Yeah, but back to what I was saying, I remember the older people in my St. Thomas community that I grew up in and people that were having children, that when they, when they had their children, they would usually not do it in their house because back in those days when I was growing up, you have your child and because you were so isolated for that three months, you couldn't even go to the shop for three months. I, Karen, I was talking about you using the onion oil on your face and it completely took away everything from your face because I sent you the wrong product, but I'll come back to that later. These women used to you do the vaginal cleanse. They used to sit on the warm water and oftentimes they would do it for, um, and oftentimes they would do it for, Maybe once a week, once every two weeks. And in no time, the stomach bounced back. I even remember when I was living in Bath, there was this particular lady that everybody around her seemed, she was infertile. Now we know that it was infertile. They used to call her a mule. Yeah. But now we know that that is such an unkind thing to say. Yeah, Anna, it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of things that can be, it depends on what you are still, what is it that you hope to achieve? Is it that you're trying to, is it that you're trying to stimulate fertility, meaning people are saying that their tubes are blocked? Is it that your vagina, um, you have not properly cleansed after menstruation, so remen <laughs> Um, residue of your menstruation or residue of sperms are still in your vagina because a lot of people used to say first time people used to say or in the older days people used to say as soon as you have unproduct unprotected sex and sperms is released inside your vagina you need to go and pee because naturally not some people chemistry do not go together and a lot of women will find it embarrassing but it is true for a lot of women after they have had sex a woman that has a perfectly healthy vagina after she has had sex and a man has ejaculated in her on day three she starts to have a salt mackerel vagina it is not that she is nasty. It is not. It is just that the chemical makeup of her vagina and the chemical makeup of his semen do not go together. Yeah. So you need to have the heat and the aroma and the active ingredients from these herbs enter your system up in your female part, expansion, release and contraction. Same for a lot of people who find it hard to get pregnant. I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to tell you that it's going to make you pregnant. But I can tell you that I tried everything medically possible, including seven IVFs within 10 years to get pregnant. And it was until I returned to my maroon roots and started doing the things that I witnessed all the people in my community. And of course, I was drinking dog blood as if it was going out of style. Yeah. And for those of you who are from Jamaica and do not know what dog blood is, I can't help you. Look into your, look into your fence and you probably see something with a small red berry on it. Yeah. So that is that one for the vagina. The other one, I, I want to take up this one. I think I did a live on it some times ago. There are some of us who do not wear black underwear. And we are off the miss because of ignorance or because of what society tells us. We are of the misconception that a woman whose vaginal fluid bleaches her, her underwear. That woman is sick. And that is not true. The chemical makeup of your vagina equates to that of the chemical makeup of hydrogen peroxide or beer. Pour some hydrogen peroxide in the crotch of your underwear. 
when the vagina gets out of balance, usually the chemical makeup is of that of bear. When it gets out of balance, when the vagina is telling you that... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, when the vagina is telling you that I am out of balance, you need to get me back on track. Then the properties are as that of hydrogen peroxide, which means it is going to bleach your underwear. I was still alive where I said something, you know. People use hydrogen peroxide to clean their teeth. I won't say anymore because I'm on my proper page. So I won't say it here. Yeah. Yeah. So that is also one of those common misconceptions that, um, and I'm pretty sure it happens to every woman at some point in her life because we are of the also, the capitalist tells us that we need to use these vaginal washes and we need to use these intimate washes and we do not realize that we are putting ourselves in a trap when we use these first of all you're not supposed to use soap down there mm -mm, mm -mm. thank you deborah thank you very much when we use these vaginal washes that they claim to be pH balance. They, they are not intended to balance off the pH of your vagina. And that is what we don't understand. Some of us, when our vagina starts to smell, because the, it is not because you didn't clean it, it's because you cleaned it too much. So, because we read on these labels, pH balanced we automatically think that if the vagina is off, when you use these intimate washes, thank you, Nads. When you use these intimate washes, then it is intended to balance it. No. They are pH balance. And basically what they're saying is that if your vagina on the day that you use that wash is pH balanced, then you don't need to worry about it jumping out. Now, in the event that your vagina starts to smell and it happens to the best of us, mm -hmm, it does happen. Maybe not often, but at least once in your life, you have been in a position where somebody could use their nose to find your vagina. It happens to every woman. Don't have to admit it to me. Me know it happened. Your first course of action is coconut oil. Yeah, the good old hot processed coconut oil that you would use to get rid of fungus on your toenails. A little coconut oil should solve the problem in two days. Or you go to your pharmacy and you buy bacteria. I think I have that bacteria somewhere here, sold in a tube in Sweden. I always have it just in case. I'm pretty sure I have it. Because the, the body is their good bacteria and their bad bacteria. When you disturb the bacterial makeup of your vagina, it is going to stink. It's going to smell. It is going to. And the only way to solve that is bacteria. Now, why coconut oil? Hot processed coconut oil, if left for a day or two in a pH unbalanced environment, will breathe healthy bacteria. And that is all that is why coconut oil is able to balance the pH of your vagina. I'm not a vaginal expert and all I know about is my vagina because I'm not interacting with nobody else's vagina. 
But things I've learned. The same coconut oil, a lot of us, especially those of us who live in these climates, we get nail fungus. Winter time, we get nail fungus. That same coconut oil, put it on your nails. Put a little peppermint cream. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going peppermint cream. You're good. Maybe three weeks, fungus is gone. So do your steaming. Wash your lady parts with just pure water. If you can afford it, wash it with kangen water. Because bottled water is shit. So <laughs> wash it with pure water. And do your steaming. If it is only after you have um, your menstruation, do your steaming. And for those of you who are taking hormones, fertility blockers that are not having your menstruation, it is even more reason for you to steam. For those of you who have multiple sex partners, <laughs> steam me out. Mm -hmm. If you want to boost your fertility, steam it. Steam it. Stimulate it. Thank you for listening. I'm Karen. I did the, I um I did speak so you don't sue me. I did speak about the fact that um I accidentally sent you the wrong product. And um, I should have sent you the anti-aging serum and I sent you the onion serum. But because you are a natural, how often should you steam, Joanna? I would say at least um, after every menstruation, so maybe once a month. I, when I was a sexually active woman, I usually steam like once a week. Um, since I was in a long-term relationship and wasn't exactly using condoms. Yeah, so I might be a bit extreme. Um, and because I think also part of it, no, I steam like every other week because it is cold in Sweden. I wear leggings, I wear tights. Um, the vagina gets very hum humid. Um, and if you're one of those shavers, if you're a shaver, you need to steam because, first of all, the hair is on your vagina to protect it. But because... Um, commercialization of skincare and all that tells us that we're not supposed tells us that it's unhygienic which is the complete opposite so the shavers need to steam to somehow bring ha have botanicals bring back that that balance yeah, but definitely after a day or two after your menstruation has stopped. Why a day or two? Because the because you have stopped bleeding, because you have stopped bleeding does not mean that there are not there isn't um residue of your menstruation somewhere between your fallopian tube and um dondesso, whatever it is called. Yeah, and that is what usually leads. It is that residue that usually leads to us having that slightly off smell. And then the problem is when we get that slightly off smell, we start to use all sorts of things to clean it, not realizing that. Exactly, Natalie, you know? <laughs> you think you're easy? You think you easy? <laughs> um, and as hot as you, the only thing I recommend you use hot water to do is when you're steaming. I don't recommend you use hot water to clean your skin um, because the heat strips your, but you need the whole active ingredient things. You need the whole thing. So I think that the more we go back to our roots, the, the more we go back to our African traditions, the more we go back to the things that our grandparents and their grandparents used to do, is the less we will have a subscription with the pharmaceutical company.
Yeah, because you have to ask yourself, how is it that your great grandmother had 10 kids, your grandmother had 12, your mother had 11, and then you are here in your 30s, the clock is ticking down on you like it was ticking down on me, and your piss can bon grass. Sorry, you're suffering from infertility. And the only thing is that we have become so westernized, both in our food and how in what we in what we take internally and the thing and what we put on our skin externally and we have so we are so removed away from our traditions that we are now suffering we are now putting ourselves um on par with these um developed world problems low birth rate infertility thyroid problem hypothyroid um First world diseases, diabetes, high blood pressure, all of that shit. Because, so find, as Jamaicans would say, spin your roll, find your way back home. Yeah? If you're a person who is sexually active without a condom, because you see, let me tell you something. Some of you think that this withdrawal thing, him already did start come long time before him withdraw, yeah? So it is still in there. After a while, it go build up, clog up, and come in like a wax in there. Mm-hmm. Me gone. What good?